ஓம் பூர்ணமத பூர்ணமிதம் பூர்ணாத் பூர்ணமதுச்சதி பூர்ணய பூர்ணமாதாய பூர்ணமேவாசிஷதி ஓம் சாந்தி 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 ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஆல் the concept of the energy which when it is activated and uh, made to ascend levels of awareness one subtler than the other this is usually not usually always this energy is is depicted as feminine feminine shakti because shakti is feminine there's a popular saying that without the e of shakti shiva is shava not accurate but it's a common saying what it means is when everything is quiet and in complete balance now don't mistake shiva to be male here okay because shiva is also considered ardhanarishwara so when everything is silent and settled with not a ripple on it in complete peace when the all the four angles of the square are 90 degrees not the rhombus not the rhombus then that is called the state of shivam of absolute peace absolute essence where there are no two things but only shiva according to the teachings and also according to the experience of sages we have discovered <clears throat> that there is one fully peaceful all pervading supreme being which is not disturbed by doors opening and closing <laughs> and camel that peaceful state is called shivam and is the original state no the vedic mantra purnamada purnamidam describes that shivam you can call it brahman if you don't like shivam describes that as completeness purna totality nothing left to fill fulfilled absolute so that is called purna mada that is purna but luckily for us the sages have said and people have discovered it is also purna midam that purna is not different from this purna even though this world appears to be incomplete and always on the move and trying to complete itself <laughs> i suddenly saw somebody move <laughs> sorry 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 so when what did i say so yeah so therefore really okay so purna mata purnam idam so what the sages are trying to say is that purna which is complete and all pervading and absolutely at peace and quiet is also that which is us in us when we forget the little petty identities that we have <clears throat> and even if one is not a yogi and is not meditating when people become less selfish a little bit of purna is automatically manifested when i am not just thinking of myself i'm thinking of others because i may not know it but it is a reflection of the same purna is on one side but the sages 
like you and me. <laughs> oh no, like you. <laughs> Have through meditation and realization understood the fact that the spark in us, the consciousness in us is no different from that Purna. So, Purna Mada. So when everything is silent and quiet, everything is Purna. But now we are not Purna because in that quietness there was a ripple and that ripple is Shakti. If you want to reflect it in human life, you are sitting all quiet and nice on the terrace. Hmm? Everything is quiet. Then there appears a damsel somewhere. <laughs> Could be the other way also. The damsel is sitting quietly, <laughs> happily, then comes a man from there. In the same way, in this quiet, there's nothing wrong with it, I'm just explaining facts. In that purnata, in that completeness, comes a small ripple. We don't know why, like desire. It's not desire for something, it's just an excitement of the fire of a desire, let's say. And from there the differentiation starts, the one becomes many. So now we think we are many. So if we want to go back to the one Shivam, what should we do? Catch hold of that thing that excited you. What is that? It is Shakti. Sondari Lahiri says, Shankara, after talking about all Brahman and Absolute and Maya and so on, says, Shiva Shaktiya Yukto Yadi Bhavati Shakta Prabhavitam Naje Devam Devo Nakalu Kushala Haspanditum. He also says, Bhavani Tvam Lase Mai Vitara Drishti. Bhavani Tvam Lase Mai Vitara Drishti. So, that Shakti, that Shivam in its absolute silence, in our differentiated, divisive state is not available to us. If, you, if it is available, that's fine. Generally it's not available. Because our mind has imagination, our mind has all these desires and so on. So, who can take you there? The Shakti. So you say, okay, you are the cause of the original movement of this earth. Take me back to that silence, who is none other than that ultimate state from which you have also come. So, the bindu which we have, which we are trying to visualize, or the streak of lightning, or in some cases, the beautiful Raja Rajeshwari Tripura Sundari, or in some cases, the terrible Kali with her knife out and tongue out. These are all various aspects of that Shakti, energy in us, in man and woman, both, it is there. At the bottom of the spine, in the temple called the Muladhara, with four entries. <coughs> so, when we do the Kriya, what we are trying to do? This Shakti has done its work. It's usually sleeping. Latent. Everybody has it, man or woman. Usually it's sleeping, it's not active. Yeah, it's active generally when the human being has a sexual arousal. But active in one direction. After food and sleep, what is the thing that really arrests a human being? Sex. Why? Because it is the Shakti which is released in one direction. The practice of Kriya is to control that Shakti and turn it around so that it moves in another direction. It's the same thing. Therefore, if one experiences ecstasy in a small manifestation of Shakti when you are having sex, what would happen if it is manifested in its complete wholeness in another direction? That is the ecstasy 
celebrated by Shankara in the Saundari Lahiri, the ecstasy of beauty. So all the practice we do is to the chakti sleeping, get up, can get up wild, can get up peacefully. So we are trying to do the peaceful way, which is called the Samaya Marga. So we are praying and saying, please come up. And we are taking this bindu. You know what a bindu is? A small dot. You know how small the particles are which can bring up an atomic explosion of a hundred megatons. You can't even see with your eyes. In the same way, this bindu is a concentration or a, a, a sense of all that is in the universe put together. But in sleeping state, when you awaken it, the process of Kriya, Mahamudra, everything, is to awaken it and lead it step by step through the various palaces where she is allowed to rest for a while, open up some doors and then go to the highest where she becomes one with Shiva. Shivam. Please, you can don't have to introduce a personality here. Don't have to. When the Shakti touches the Supreme Shivam, then we are back to that state of complete peace and Shiva. There is no chanchalata there. The chanchala has been made to go and meet that which is quiet and we are back to the state individually of the same state that was before creation. And then at short notice you may come down. So every day you have to do it. Hmm. You got what I am trying to say? Yeah. So when this is done you realize that deep in the essence of your being there is this completely peaceful Shivam and all the activity of Shakti merges in it. And the ecstasy is something which sages have tried to say, have failed to express the completeness and ecstasy. In fact, the Upanishadic seer wanting to say, it says, Navidmo, Navijanimo, Yathayatat, Anushishyat, I can't understand how to explain this to you. And if you experience it, you'll have the same difficulty of explaining it to somebody else. <coughs> how will you explain it? Can you explain your own experience actually to somebody else? Even if the energy is awakened only in the Muladhara? You can't. You can only say Majama. <laughs> hmm. Wonderful. <laughs> so, that's, this is where we have to head, move towards. Hmm? So now, therefore, when this energy is awakened from the Muladhara, there have been pictorial depictions like snake coil three times or like Devi sitting and so on and so forth, it doesn't matter. The Bindu is a very good definition of it. Or a flame or a streak of lightning or whatever. So the lower center where it usually sleeps and awakens only once in a while, to make humankind spread. The Old Testament, God says to Adam, be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> On the tree in the middle of the garden. So, anyway, so, from there, So that has a description, it has a color and it has a sound. So after doing your Mahamudra and the Vishuddhi Nabhi and the Brahmari, mm, yeah, 
No, oh, okay, it's all right. But don't give copies to anybody. Hmm. Hmm. Give, put, you can put it on YouTube, otherwise they'll keep sending me emails. Hmm. <laughs> so, um, okay. Um, yeah. So this is the last, the, the, the resting place, the Mula Adhara. Mula means root. And Adhara is foundation or proof. Anybody, everybody has Aadhaar cards here? And there was no Chakradharna. <laughs> Mula Aadhara. <laughs> so, from the Mula Aadhara, when the energy is awakened, it goes to another center. So we have to visualize that center. Not in detail. I am going to give you a very simple technique of how to do this. That's what I want to do. So, from, because when you do the Kriya, you already clean the channel. So when the energy begins to get active, there is no obstacle, no blockage. It's when there is blockage that there are reactions. So, uh, the next center is called the Swadhisthana one's own center. It is the Swadhisthana that actually manages dreams, imagination and so on. And it is represented by Ardha Chandram, Shashi Prabham, half moon, half moon, crescent moon, Shashi Prabham, with the uh, light of the moon, of Shashi. Mm-hmm. And it has a sound. We'll come to that later. So, from the Muladhara, the Bindu or the snake is led to the Swadhisthana. As it reaches each center, step by step, the mind expands. You're no more a petty little being, but the mind expands. Not only in kindness and compassion, but also in being aware of things which you were not aware of before. Like a flute. Can you switch it up? No. <laughs> Thank you. So, Swadhisthana. Then, it's also that which controls your subtle body which is the Shushma Sharira and so on. Then from there it comes to the navel center which is called the Manipura or Kundalini Chakra center. The Manipura is represented by a triangle which is apex up and colored like fire. It's actually a flame. Aruna Prabham, like the color of the fire. And it has a sound. Then, it comes to the uh, Hridaya or the Anahat. Now, you will, if you look into medical books, you will find that all these chakras I am describing, centers I am have a plexus there, formed of two branches of the autonomous nervous system coming together. Then, from, so that is sky blue in color. It is symbolically uh, expressed as two equilateral triangles together. Like the flag of Israel. You find it in many temples. The star with six corners. Hmm? Yeah. Ramakrishna is a um, theosophical society. Hmm. And then from here, and it is sky blue in color, Akasha. <laughs> and 
and then <laughs> from akasha it goes to the vishuddhi which is indigo in color deep violet and is oval shaped and then from there to the ajna which is like two white petals and a white little shivlinga in the middle this is how it is usually i mean symbolized and then from here it goes here it here there is a thousand petal lotus of multiple colors it's more like the colored lights in the fountain near burj dubai and <laughs> also sound coming out <laughs> sahasrara chakra <coughs> here so these are the different centers for the poor little bindu to travel when she reaches here in the sahasrara she is one with the lord and there is what is known as kaivalya one is alone and there is nothing left except shivam there are no two there is only one all divisions have ceased and there one is in ecstasy so now obviously we can't catch shakti and make her work and so on so let me explain again what these centers could mean and then go to the practical side the lowest center the muladhara is symbolized by a square with a triangle inside the triangle we talked about yesterday the best way to visualize is think of a red triangular sticker with a diamond in the middle stuck in the perineum please don't ask me i finished meditating how to pull the sticker out just a wish you have no idea what questions people so this is the lowest center and now it's represented by a bigger square which is golden in color because the square represents prakriti prithvi earth the earth the color is golden sugandhim prishti vardhanam Mm. so <clears throat> solid it means consciousness in its solid form okay now the swadhisthana so it's called the prithvi tatva according to sankhya and the next tatva is apas tatva which is not water apas means liquid hm mm? liquid which means what from the solid to the liquid is what which means you are taking a awareness from solid earth to something which is more fluid fluid yeah then from there you come to the agni chakra which is the manipura so between the manipura and the muladhara is the swadhisthana in the manipura the symbol is a triangle with its apex up this represents the spiritual fire the desire for spiritual growth just as there is spirit, ordinary fire when you are in love that's also a kind of fire right the fire of desire here this fire is the fire that wants to take you to subtler realms the fire of nachiketas and color is uh, fire red so what does it represent combustion heat energy which transforms further the liquid to something subtler than that which is vayu tatva so the anahat has vayu tatva which means what gaseous so you have come from solid to liquid through the heating of the kundalini fire 
into that which is subtler, which is wide. Maruti. And that is sky blue and two triangles together, star. And it has a sound. So from solid you have now come to gaseous. Your awareness has expanded from ordinary geometry to calculus, where zero is so important, chunya. And then from here you go to the throat, which is the Vishuddhi, which represents Akasha. Now, there is no equivalent physical term in physics for Akasha. In Sankhya and in Tantra, it is described as the original state of undifferentiated matter, from which matter is differentiated and become many tattvas. And at the end, we'll go back to it. Its visible symbol is the sky. So your consciousness from solid brick has become now into akasha, undifferentiated space. Space. Space is so important. You know why we don't understand? Because we are full of muck. Take it out and there is space. And from there come to the Ajna. Now the Ajna Chakra for yogis, yogis, um, Ajna Chakra represents Varanasi. Because we explained yesterday, Ida, Pingala, starting from here, starting from here, they cross here. Where the river Varuna and the Asi cross is called Varanasi for us. I mean, here sits Shiva in his splendor. Which means, from the subtlety of Akasha, which also is so subtle that the mind cannot grasp almost, we have gone to that which is beyond. So, this is where the Bindu goes after ascending the different steps. Now, each one also has a sound to activate. I'll, you, I'll tell you about that. The sound of the lowest center, the Muladhara, is Lam. The Swadhisthana is Vam. The Manipura is Ram. Ram, Ram. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then the, huh? the Anahat is Yam, not M, Yam. Yam, Lang, sorry, Lam, Vam, Ram, Yam, Ham, Ham. And from here, just as we draw the Nama, Om, up to here. So Om is for both the Ajna as well as the Sahasrara. Sahasrara Om ends. Here it starts, Om. Turiya. Mm. In other words, Jagrata, waking state, dream state, deep sleep, and Ardhamatra, mm. Turiya, if you put in Vedantic terms. So finally we have to get there, right? Okay. So we have done the Mahamudra. Now, First we need to get this idea into my, our mind. What are we doing? Right? Okay. Then, is there a technique, simple technique to get this done? Well, there are many complicated techniques. People start with puja and Sri Yantra. This, that. That's one. If you want to wander around for many lives, one can do that. But, 
there is also a simple way of bringing the energy in you and awakening it instead of just on a gold or copper plate because all the entras all the 49 triangles are here and the bindu is here and the meru is here inside and it is a pratyaksha anubhava actual experience so i have uh, for modern times you need to change techniques right so instead of going into all the detail each yantra has so many sounds and petals and nobody has time and it's not going to work so here's a simple way of doing it the lowest is lum right the sound so now don't start doing anything now we'll have a session in the bottom at the end of the spine visualize a beautiful little small golden lotus huh? with in the middle of it a small you know like lotus has a bud in the middle small round thing visualize a golden lotus with a small golden bud there except that the golden bud should be visualized as a tiny ion led bulb <laughs> i'm advertising for you <laughs> small little led bulb golden colored inside the golden colored lotus i'm telling you from the modern point of view okay from that lotus goes to shushumna which is a single line connection a wire can think of it as golden white anything you want comes to the next swadhisthana which is a beautiful moon colored lotus with a moon bulb in the middle connected the serial and then the manipura is a red scarlet lotus with a red bulb inside middle and then this is a sky blue lotus with a sky blue bulb in here an indigo purple lotus small please make it small otherwise you will <laughs> and inside a small single bulb <laughs> and then here pure white lotus milk white with a bulb and here all those multicolored bulbs you see hanging on trees for christmas or deepavali okay but now none of them have been switched on off start with the lowest muladhara close your eyes don't do anything now visualize the bulb and say few times lum 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 switch on why many times you can say lum and switch it on at once but sometimes the person who switch it on is a little deaf so you have to say um lum lum lit then go to the next center wam wam is the switch to light this so you have this lit ram red light is lit yam sky blue light is lit hum the purple light is lit now you are fully lit here you have a milk white bulb lit the near multicolored lights here lit in the lotus stop there when the bindu is taken there stop there so everything is shining together then say om and switch off everything hmm repeat if you find some of these uh, lights more interesting than the others you are allowed to stay on for a while but don't forget to go up hmm you'll get a, a kind of a blissful feeling 
the only way in material world we can say is like the sexual feeling, but it's not that actually, it's something better, not better, more than that, as it goes up. So, the other thing is, when you say lum, take a short breath, switch on, bum, switch on, hmm? rum, switch on. So when you do that short breath, what are you doing? Bringing the bindu, only short taste. Then, yum, switch on. Hum. When you reach here, then you can't breathe anymore, you've taken so. Up, hold it for a while, Lit light all the lights. Exhale, Om. Oh. All lights are gone. Hmm? Now, in some schools of thought, only two schools of thought, in Tibet and in Bengal, the lum becomes lung, wang, rang, yang, hong, o. Oh. It doesn't matter, you can do that. <laughs> Went to Tibet because some of the Kagyu order teachers went from Bengal. Hmm. So you can say lam, wam, ram also. The actual akshara in Sanskrit is lam. La, mm, lam. So, um, do you want to try to practice it? I have no doubt that <laughs> I have no doubt that you are from the IIT. Absolutely. <laughs> it's just countless Sahasraram. <laughs> it's okay. No, I have a friend here from Mysore who after I explained everything he said, finally when we go home how to pull the wire out. <laughs> I'm sure he's sitting somewhere. <laughs> huh? Simple, soft breathing. Okay. In the middle of the body is okay. But now tell me, let me tell you, if that breathing doesn't suit you, like that, just do the lum vam ram. Okay? Depends on how you want to do it. So, shall we start? It is a good idea to do that. But you can do it mentally also. You don't have to actually do that. But if you want to make sure that it's happening, you can touch, but you can do with your mind also. Hmm? In your mind, you're not saying ram, bam, and in your mind, it's mental chanting. Please, it's not, men it's not loud chanting, okay? Otherwise I'll hear after some time, lam, 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 <laughs> lam. In the mind. Lam, bam, ram, yam, ham, om. This is in your mind. Saragama badani sa, sani na bamagadi sa. Sir? How many? You, you can do as much as you want. Huh? But right now, don't count. Do for ten minutes. When you go home and you get enough time. Okay. And when you're alone in your house, when there's nobody, you can also chant loudly if you want. But generally, in 
the mind. Hmm? Okay? Once more, lam, vam, ram, yam, hum, om. Start. I'm going to say one, two, three, and you start. First, please, before anything, close your eyes. Om, Rim, Shri, Guru, Vyo, Namah, Tanchan. Okay, one, two, three.
हरि ओम तत्सत हरि ओम तत्सत हरि ओम ये शॉर्ट ब्रेक से दैट I can't hear you. What? Huh? Sit. What are you saying? I don't understand. Say that somebody repeat. Suppose I get chakra activates during the practice. What should we do? Ah. Suppose when you are doing the chakra dharana, any one center, including the Ajna chakra, becomes, you feel more activated, then stop everything and sit quietly looking at it, passively, without doing anything. You can chant Om in your mind. I actually was going to say this, that after doing the whole thing, sit for a short while doing nothing but with attention here in the Ajna Chakra. Then stop. That's the correct procedure. Thank you. Sir, activation of a chakra means you, you are feeling energy flowing that chakra. Yeah, activation means you feel something nice going on there. Something nice going Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, these are all symbols. Finally, you have to get it down, no? You have to wake up. So you hit and say, oh, that's all. Why twice? Oh, that is only when you go up. That is different from this oh. You should. <laughs> Absolutely. With, if possible, with your attention here. Suppose it's somewhere here, then you can sit. Hmm. You don't have to worry about the bindu at all. Just feel the breath coming up and lighting up the centers. Huh? Huh? It's normal, normal. Look, don't go into these details. The main thing is to light up the centers. Huh? Om, Om. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. You don't have to hit hard, just as to down, to switch off. Once it goes up, switch off. Then again go up few times. After that stop and fix your attention and sit down. Yes, yes. Light it again. Say that again. What? This is Badrinath. Take this as more serious. <laughs> That is for Trump. This is. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Please stop. He's saying something. No, you just ascend, and then when you switch off, it's actually descending. And when you ascend for a few times, and you feel some activation, you should sit with your attention here and just be relaxed. 
even if you don't want it to ascend it will go back to until we become so advanced that it refuses to descend yes descent when you sh- touch and switch off the lights it is already descent it's gone even if you don't hit it will go you can't hold it there yeah you can in a different stage ha huh. keep it <laughs> if the purple light keeps coming you will soon become a beautiful orator <laughs> or you will sing beautifully your voice will improve so let it be. it will go off don't worry it will switch off by itself <laughs> just relax if it's a particular center chant the sound of that bijakshara sit quietly allow it to happen just do hmm don't ask me any more questions i'm drunk <laughs> said some unnecessary thing ha huh? <laughs> don't stay down don't stay in one especially in the muladhara for very long because you know what will happen narayani namostu tatsa ha yeah. what you can be to no problem <laughs> hmm the psychological effect is that everything is quiet and calm and you are not agitated there is no agitation there is no desire to move there is no desire to merge there is nothing it's all over the flower has become the fragrance finished brahmri Yes. 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 Hmm? Then sit quietly and relax with Ajnita. Sure, absolutely. You can keep on doing lum 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 lum. Then, like, don't do like Narayani. Stay there, but more then lum lum lum. <laughs> then, wham wham wham. no not required you see like let me show two variations one is three don't have to phat you just say om <laughs> ganesh can you come in front because i can't hear you from 
What is that? Say that again. Mm. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. That's right. Now I'm going to stop the questions. Too many questions. Yeah. If you, after Kriya, don't feel like doing any chakra dharana, then just relax and that's it. Oh, after. <laughs> then don't do anything means what? <laughs> like what? <laughs> okay. I think you should relax for a while, at least for five minutes. Don't do anything. Just keep quiet, then start your writing, reading mode. <laughs> what can I do? <laughs> when can I do? <laughs> last question. Oh, there are two last questions. Okay, if you can't do the color, stay with that. That's all right. That's all right. A vodka has no color. <laughs> hmm. I can't hear you. Sorry. Yes. Yes. They are connected internally, don't worry about it. What is there to understand? It's all linked together, but the Guru Mantra should be here. And the Om is here. Finished. I told, I said two last questions. Huh? No problem. That no problem I like. Okay, for the time being, disperse.